Hi, I'm Stefan Jensen from Fly Dressing. You're watching Fly TV, and today we are sight fishing for big sea trout in small rivers. Hi, and welcome back to Fly TV. My name is Stefan Jensen, and we're in the south of Sweden. This river is my home water, and I know it very well. And today, we're gonna fish for big sea trout, sight fishing for big sea trout. As you can see, this is quite a small river. Um, it's low water, it's gin clear water. We're gonna go and spot the fish, choose the fish that we wanna catch. There's extremely big fish in this little river and uh, we gotta sneak like Indians to get close to the fish. We gotta use everything we learned. We gotta try our best. It's, it's difficult fishing and more, much more difficult when we want to sight fish for the sea trout. It would have been easier to go down and fish the spots where you know the fish is at, where they are normally hanging. But I find it much more fun to spot the fish see the fish take that fly it's some of the best fishing i can i can imagine if we would get that lucky that we would actually hook a fish <laughs> then we got a new problem we are going quite long leaders um, light leaders and big fish and when the fish takes off i got nowhere to go there's a lot of dead wood in the water there's a lot of big rocks if we, if we manage to hook a fish, we're probably going to lose 70%. I think so far, during the whole summer fishing, autumn fishing, at this point there's probably only been five or six fish landed. Total, in total. I haven't landed a single fish so far this year. Let's find a sea trout to sight fish for. Okay, so now we have found a fish here. Gonna give it a go, but we're extremely exposed and it's quite difficult to get down, but um, we'll give it a go. Oh, that went. Well, yeah, these fish are so extremely easy to spook. Um, just took off. I don't know whether it was the ducks or it was us or something else, but well, hey, hey, it's back, it's back. There it is. Stand still. We need to work something out. Um, upstream, downstream. I think we'll try upstream. It's a lot easier. Um, oh, we are so exposed here. So extremely exposed. This fish is quite high in the water, so I'll try with an unweighted wet fly, um, like a well-known Swedish fly, Ulsok. Um, but this one is going to be difficult. <laughs> it's just below the surface, and hmm, let's see, one shot, one wrong shot, and it's gone. It's getting down here and I can't really see where the fish is standing. Hopefully I can. Oh. Let's give it a go. I think I know where it is. My fly is dry, I need to wet it first, so it's now or never. This is a chance. Oh. One shot. And one fish gone. <laughs> I was about half a meter too short, I landed probably straight in the head of the fish. But I couldn't see it, I just I took a chance and bye bye. One uh, very important thing, well maybe the, the most important thing when sight fishing is your, your Polaroids. 
And without these glasses, I probably wouldn't see even half of the fish which I am actually seeing. What we're going to do is we're going to show you through the camera lens how important this is and what the difference is. How we can remove all the reflections of the water by using these glasses. Here in the low water we found a pike which we thought that would be a good opportunity to show you how the polarization filter on the camera works. Uh, we can turn the filter on and off so we're just going to show you how it works. This is what it looks like with, uh, without a filter. And uh, can you see the pike? Maybe not. Probably not. Turn the filter on. And the pike is clearly in front of us. So this is why polarization is such a, such a fantastic tool for us. I couldn't do this fishing without them. Another important thing about the glasses is the lens color. Down here, we more or less always got low light, uh, not a whole lot of light coming in. So lenses, yellow lenses, amber lenses, or at least lenses made for, for low light is, uh, is the best for this fishing. That makes everything a whole lot easier. The, the contrasts are so much bigger with lenses made for, for low light. I just saw something flash out here. Just a little bit to the right of that green thing out there. Could be a sea trout. Um, I'll give it a go. Sitting in a hole waiting for the train She tried to fill this old too late to start again It should be somewhere around here Oh, a fisk! Oh shit! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh. Holy shit, holy... Oh, I think it's a good fish as well. Oh yeah. I just saw um, something flash down here. And uh, second time I placed my fly, this whopper just came and took it. Oh, it's an absolute beauty. Fresh from the sea. Oh, my knees are shaking. Oh man. It could take a while. I've only got... Uh, 0.24 liter and I got a lot of branches in the water over here and I got trees and stuff which the fish could get tangled up in. Oh come on. Oh man. Come on. I'm a bit nervous because I got a long long leader and I don't want to, I don't want to get the leader inside of the rod at all actually. Beautiful fish. No, 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 don't go in there. Beautiful sea trout. Oh, no, no, that's the worst place you could ever go. Ah, got it. What a fish! Look at that! Beautiful fish! Um, oh my god! And that fly is just anchored. Perfectly hooked. It couldn't be better. What a fish! <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, look at that. It's just perfectly hooked. Oh, it's off. That little silvery thing, grey and silver. On a tied on the carp hook, just because we are dealing with these bigger fish. Look at that fish. <laughs> oh, look at that fish. Well, 
sight fishing for sea trout. Nothing beats it. It's just amazing. You should all try it. Let's put this one back. Thank you very much. In this river, in most places, it's more or less impossible to do an overhead cast. But I would like to show you the two most used casts in a place like this, where you've got a lot of trees hanging over and you've got a lot of things behind you, so you can't move your rod back too far. So the first cast I want to show you is the road cast. First of all, you just need to get some line out. So you got some weight to roll. The basics in a roll cast is just to keep your fly line and leader and fly in the water and just roll it out. I'll show it once more, a little bit more line. Drag it towards you. You just let your line hang in the water, hang from the rod in the water and just roll it out. A very simple cast but very effective when you want to cast a short distance. The next cast I want to show you is the underhand cast. Uh, very effective as well, but mostly used in situations where you got to cast a bit further or you got to get underneath trees and very tight, uh, very tight spots where you need to get to fly in underneath a, a tree that's hanging over. The main thing that separates the underhand cast from the road cast is that in the road cast, I'll just show you that again so you got it fresh in mind. Um, you just keep your line in water at the whole time and you just roll it out. Here you lift the line off the water, place it and forward again. So you get a lot more power and it's easier for you to put your line, your, your loop a lot tighter so you can get into positions where you wouldn't have been able to go with the road cast. So again, lift it up, place it and forward. Try and learn these two casts and you'll, you'll see there's a lot of places you can actually fish without putting the line in the air. That was a beast. <laughs> that fish must have been, I don't know, <laughs> at least six kilos, seven. Or maybe even eight. That was the, <laughs> the search is on for that fish. It just went upstream somewhere and well let's go and have a look. Han är stor som ett jävla tåg. Fy fan. It's more or less impossible to tell how big it is, but I would reckon it it's a huge fish at the moment. I can't see it but we just need the sun to get out again. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. He's actually moved down a little bit. Now he's coming up. He's in an even worse position than he were before. That is like a dream fish. I mean, that's a fish of a lifetime. May God help us. see like something of a shadow which I think is that fish but Oh, he's turning. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, so this big, big, big fish just took my fly, and it's this is a good fish. Oh, that's one more. I just spooked out another fish. Um, this is going to be a match. This is a very, very big fish, I think. I actually think it was that big fish, which we saw before. I hope so, anyway. It's just doing... He's going to play his game at the moment. Let's see if we can do to stop this fish. Going around in circles. Gotta remember it's very very light leader. Shit is around us it's around the branch. Oh no, it's around a stick. He's actually at my feet, he's a mega fish. So extremely big, but my line is around. Oh man, come on. Oh, he's still on. Oh, I need to get out here somewhere. Oh. Ah, he's in the next. I think he's stuck. Ah, oh, he's off. I think it's over. The leader broke. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. Now we broke. Well, that was a monster fish. That was a very, 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 very big fish. Yeah. He broke me off. I had to try and stop him because he was way on the box. Impossible on these um, light leaders. Fuck oh, me. Oh, what's my... oh, I'm stuck. <sighs> that was a big, big, big fish. That was a fish of a lifetime. Fuck. I found a fish in the most impossible spot in the world it's well there's no tree so it's easy to cast but it's underneath that green thing you can only see his uh, tail fin it's um, it's a very difficult spot to get a, a fly out uh, fishing perfect oh look at that fish look at that fish look at that fish it's a fresh fish as well it's brand new if it goes down to a little bit deeper water Oh, it's brand new, it's like... Oh, man. Stand, 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 stand. Okay, so I thought I should show you what kind of equipment I use for this kind of fishing. Actually, it's very simple. Six weight rod, with a reel to go with that, and a floating line. That's my ground setup for this fishing. What I think is quite important when you're fishing a stream like this, when you have all of these trees hanging over the river, you've got tight spots and you need to, to make casts on places which is difficult. I prefer a line with a short belly, maybe around eight and a half meters, so you can load the rod quickly and, um, and get the fly out there. Another thing which is important for me is my leader. I take a nine foot fluorocarbon leader which I add about three or four feet so I end up with a 12 13 foot leader in a dimension which is about 0.24 millimeters I also think it's very important that it's a pure fluorocarbon leader uh, 
it sinks better and it's more or less invisible for the fish. That's the ground setup. I got two dis different type of flies. Weighted flies. This one got a weight to the head of it. Uh, that makes it sink quite fast. Then I can control the depth which I'm fishing on with my floating line. Uh, I can fish it deep and I can actually fish it quite high in the water. When you use an unweighted fly, you, it's not like a dry fly or anything, it just sinks a lot slower. So this fly is perfect for the more ground areas or for fish high up in the water. Or it could be for fish that you think needs a delicate presentation and a slow fish fly. Um, I very often change fly when I see how the fish is standing in the water. If I think this fish is quite high in the water, I'll probably use an un unweighted fly. Another thing I think is very good to have in mind is how you dress up. Um, I prefer, probably because it feels good in here, to dress very discreet. I mean, a jacket without any uh, collars on it, just a pair of normal waders, and again, nothing that stands out from the environment where you're fishing. I'm not going to go down here in an orange and blue Hawaii shirt, that's for sure. I uh, found a fish down here. I don't know how big it is. It's just outside of the branches hanging down, that dead branch. I need to back up just a little bit, change the fly and give it a go. So what just happened when we changed the fly is that the fish actually moved from straight down here to up there. You can still see the fish, but it's quite far down in the water. And for me to get down there, I'll be extremely exposed again. And there's a runner coming. It's very close. It's... Oh, it's gone. I tried to get behind the fish. I thought I was behind the fish, which I actually were. Um, I spooked it anyway. Okay, that's life. Let's try and find a new fish. Okay, so um, I actually found a fish again. Um, probably, well, I don't know, but it could be the same fish as before. Difficult to tell how big it is, but this time it's actually chosen to be on the spot where it's, it's more or less impossible to, <laughs> to fish, but I haven't got a chance to get below it. I haven't got a chance to come from upstream. My, my only chance is to, to sneak down here. And it's just, it's just standing out there on the edge of the light. Maybe if I um, climb up that tree. The fish is still here, it's just shit. I think the only chance I guess is just to drop the fly. Oh, I got it. Oh. Oh, shit. It's in, it's in, it's in, it's in here. Oh. Come on, get out. Gotta get in the water. Get out of that branch. Light tackle, you know. Come on. Ah. Come on, sit, swim, 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 swim away from me instead. Please. This was um, actually standing in a totally impossible spot. Um, I had to climb up that tree to, to just get a, a chance to cast at the fish. I just to get, and uh, well, I climbed up that tree, placed my, my fly, it was only my lead out, and uh, slowly, slowly 
just pulling the fly in front of the fish and it just came and took it. Uh, this is just a bad, bad situation. I got a lot of branches shown here. That's much better. Oh, beautiful fish as well. Gotta get in the water just to have a chance to, to land this baby. Beautiful fish as well. Oh, it's perfectly hooked. It's like it's so well anchored. That's a pleasant surprise. Come on, turn around. Got him. What a beauty. <laughs> this fish has been, uh, been in the river for a while. It's not an old fish or anything, but it's just got a slightly a light tone to it. It's not brand new. It's, it's light yellow. Little gray fly with a silver head. Perfect fly for, for, for clear waters. Um, Beautiful sea trout, fantastic. And he actually took me, took me when I was hanging from a tree. It's just amazing to spot these fish and get that close on them. You know, this fish was in a, I mean, impossible place, but we managed anyway. And I managed to get down off the tree and, <laughs> oh, life is good. Let's release him. Fantastic. Is that the salmon or what? Um, it's a sea trout. Uh -huh. Half sewing. Half sewing. Oh, we managed to get some spectators. They probably stopped and wondered what I was doing when they saw me climb up a tree and with a fishing rod and casting a line out. But um, well, I'm just glad to be able to show them what was going on. <laughs> what could you say? Amazing sea trout sight fishing hanging in the tree, yeah. I, I haven't got word for it. It's, <laughs> it's just crazy. Oh, okay, I pissed him out. I guess that's what you call an not interested sea trout. I can, I can imagine, if we would get that lucky that we would actually hook a fish, <laughs> then we got a new problem. We are going quite long leaders, um, light leaders and big fish. And when the fish takes off, I got nowhere to go. There's a lot of dead wood in the water, there's a lot of big rocks. If we, if we manage to hook a fish, we're probably going to lose 70%. I think so far, during the whole summer fishing, autumn fishing. At this point, there's probably only been five or six fish landed, total, in total. I haven't landed a single fish so far this year. Let's find a sea trout to sight fish for. Okay, so now we have found a fish here. Gonna give it a go, but we're extremely exposed and it's quite difficult to get down, but um, we'll give it a go. Oh, I went. Well, yeah, these fish are so extremely easy to spook. Um, 
just took off. I don't know whether it was the ducks or it was us or something else, but well, hey, hey, it's back, it's back. There it is. Stand still. We need to work something out. Um, upstream, downstream, I think we'll try upstream. It's a lot easier. Um, oh, we are so exposed here. So extremely exposed. This fish is quite high in the water, so I'll try with an unweighted wet fly, um, like a well-known Swedish fly, Ulsok. Um, this one is going to be difficult. <laughs> it's just below the surface, and hmm, you see one shot, one wrong shot, and it's gone. Problem is getting down here, and I can't really see where the fish is standing. Hopefully, I can. Oh, let's give it a go. I think I know where it is. My fly is dry, I need to wet it first, so it's now or never. This is a chance. Oh. One shot. And one fish gone. <laughs> I was about half a meter too short. I landed probably straight in the head of the fish. But I couldn't see it. I just I took a chance and bye bye. One uh, very important thing. Well maybe the the most important thing when sight fishing is your your polaroids and without these glasses i probably wouldn't see even half of them. hi i'm stefan jensen from fly dressing you're watching fly tv and today we are sight fishing for big sea trouts in small rivers Hi, and welcome back to Fly TV. My name is Stefan Jensen, and we're in the south of Sweden. This river is my home water, and I know it very well. And today, we're gonna fish for big sea trout, sight fishing for big sea trout. As you can see, this is quite a small river. Um, it's low water, it's gin clear water. We're gonna go and spot the fish, choose the fish that we wanna catch. There's extremely big fish in this little river and uh, we gotta sneak like Indians to get close to the fish. We gotta use everything we learned. We gotta try our best. It's, it's difficult fishing and more, much more difficult when we want to sight fish for the sea trout. It would have been easier to go down and fish the spots where you know the fish is at, where they are normally hanging. But I find it much more fun to spot the fish, see the fish take that fly. It's some of the best fishing out of the fish which I am actually seeing. What we're going to do is we're going to show you through the camera lens how important this is and what the difference is. How we can remove all the reflections of the water by using these glasses. Here in the low water we found a pike which we thought that would be a good opportunity to show you how the polarization filter on the camera works. Uh, we can turn the filter on and off, so we're just going to show you how it works. This is what it looks like with uh, without a filter. And uh, can you see the pike? Maybe not. Probably not. Turn the filter on, and the pike is clearly in front of us. So this is why polarization is such a such a fantastic tool for us. I couldn't do this fishing without them. Another important thing about the glasses is the lens color. Down here, we more or less always got low light, uh, not a whole lot of, lot of light coming in. So lenses, yellow lenses, amber lenses, or at least lenses made for, for low light is, uh, is the best for this fishing. That makes everything a whole lot easier. The, 
the contrasts are so much bigger with lenses made for, for low light. I just saw something flash out here, just a little bit to the right of that green thing out there. Could be a sea trout. Um, I'll give it a go. Somewhere around here. We got, oh, a fisk! Oh shit! A, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, holy shit! Holy! Oh, I think it's a good fish as well. Oh yeah! Whew. I just saw um, something flash down here and uh, second time I placed my fly this whopper just came and took it oh it's an absolute beauty fresh from the sea oh my knees are shaking oh man it could take a while I've only got uh, 0.24 leader and I got a lot of branches in the water over here and I got trees and stuff which the fish could get tangled up in. <laughs> 